Hi guys, welcome to the Logo Builder. Today it's quite a simple video. We're just looking at the tools that are required to make these model locomotives that you've seen me do in a few of my previous videos. I've had a few people ask for this one, so I hope this helps you out and it gives you a good idea of the tools that I use for my everyday modeling. I'll try and rank it in order of importance. So I'll start off with the tools that I think are absolutely essential. Then we'll move on to the ones that are nice to have. And finally, we'll move on to the ones that I use from time to time. Let's get onto the workbench and have a look at what we've got. Let's start with the most essential stuff then. First of all, you definitely need a soldering iron. A temperature controlled one is a good idea, and I would certainly recommend that if you're working in 00 or P4 or EM, that you get an iron of about 50 watts. This is the one that I use. It is the Antex 690D. It's a digitally controlled, temperature controlled soldering iron of 50 watts and is the actual iron unit itself and almost exclusively I use a I think this is a 2 mil chisel tip I probably use that about 90% of the time the other one I have is a one and a half or a one mil bit and I use that hardly ever so this is the main iron that I use as a secondary iron I've got this Antex 25 watt I use this for electrical work and that's got a two and a half mil chisel tip on it as well. That's a very good iron. Antex are a great company, they're based in the United Kingdom, so support them and they have also superb customer service. So I use them for all of my soldering iron stuff, they're fantastic. Continuing on with the essential stuff then, we need a selection of files and I've got quite a few here. I've got a few smaller ones here as well, so you can get a, a cheap file set. I've got triangle, I've got round, I've got square, flat files, and now I've got a selection of larger files here as well. This is a warding file with quite a rough cut on it, that's very useful. And this is a sort of medium cut triangular file. This is a lovely file to use, it's got a really nice weight and you can actually do some quite delicate work with that even though it's quite a large file. You should in theory use different files for white metal and brass be honest I don't I'm lazy and I use these files for all sorts of things as you can see there they get a bit gunked up with white metal but it, it really doesn't matter I think files yeah you can spend decent money on them if you want but also if you're just starting out a cheap set of files will do the job just as well the next tools that I would say are essential are cutting brooches I've got various sizes from very very small right up to quite large you can buy these sets on eBay and they are very useful for enlarging holes. It's important that you enlarge holes and keep them circular. If you use a file, you're likely to file in inaccuracy. If you use a cutting brooch, you can make sure that they remain accurate. For these smaller brooches here, what you'll need is a tap wrench. This is an adjustable one and it means that you can hold the cutting brooch and use it like so, it gives you a bit of extra leverage on the tool. You'll need a various selection of tweezers. I have self-locking ones, which are self-expansory. I've got some fine ones, straight ones here, and they're useful for holding small parts on so that you don't solder your fingers and burn them off. A set of miniature screwdrivers, pretty self-explanatory. You want crosshead and flathead. Here's an interesting tool. I've been asked about this one before. This is a two and a half mil graver and it's fantastic for removing excess solder from corners of joints to square them up. It's a very useful tool that I use quite often. This is a one eighth inch tapered reamer and I use this to ensure that the bearings of the wheels are opened out to the correct size. Very nice because it's 1 8 inch and the axles that we use are typically 1 8 inch so that's a great tool and that goes on to the tap wrench handle that I showed you earlier on. You will need some pliers. This is a standard set of good quality modelling pliers. I'd certainly spend good money if you can on pliers. A set of long flat nose pliers. Uh, very very useful if I was going to get one um, pair of pliers for sort of bending and manipulating metal it would be the flat nose pliers these are these are excellent I also have these ones which are 
squared off on the tip. These are most useful indeed. These pliers are from Zuron. These are photo etch cutters and they are quite useful for quickly removing photo etch from sprues. You've seen me use this in the video before. It's probably intended for sort of more like your, your model aeroplane purposes and, and small photo etch, but this is a very useful tool for quickly removing material from sprues. And then finally here we have a Zuron track cutter. It's a very sharp cutting blade and I use it for also cutting things like brass rod. The next tools that are essential in my opinion are scalpel blades. These are by Swan Morton. This is a number four blade, uh, sorry, a number four handle. Um, this one is a number three handle and I've got two different blades that I like to use. A straight blade and a curved blade. The curved blade is very, very useful for working with all sorts of metal, scraping, cutting, and the code for that is, it's a number 23 reference 0110 for the curved blades. And then for the straight blades, it's a 10 alpha reference 0102. Next for your essential kit list is a pin vise and a selection of drill bits. I've got from 0.3 to 1.6 there, and then from 0.5 to 2.2 there. The smaller ones do tend to break occasionally, so you will need to buy replacements. They're kind of almost like consumables really, but essential that you've got a pin vise and miniature drills. You will most certainly need one of these. This is a glass fiber brush or a burnishing brush. Little bristles in there and you just use it. You see me use it all the time just for cleaning up the metal before you solder it. It's an essential piece of kit. Quite cheap, a few pounds I think. This is a Romford axle screwdriver or nut screwdriver I don't know whatever it's called but anyway it's from Romford and if you use the Romford system you'll need this to secure the wheel nuts onto the axle so I guess that makes it an essential bit of equipment. Back to back gauge you'll definitely need one of these for whichever gauge you're modeling in as we're going to be setting wheel back to backs when we're making kits and also just generally checking your stock right is something you want to have in your toolkit so a back to back gauge is definitely on the essential list. Here's a small set square. These are available quite cheaply off eBay. Nothing special about that, but it does help to ensure that you get right angles and generally speaking, right angles are what you need when you're building stuff. This is a fantastic piece of kit. This is probably one of the most important things for any beginner or experienced modeler alike. It's a jig and this is to help you set up the chassis in a parallel manner, make sure it's all square and true. This is a Poppy's Wood Tech Loco Builder Box and I will put the link to their company in the description below. These are absolutely superb for helping you build model railway locomotives. And the final bit of essential kit that you need, well in my opinion anyway, is some sanding sticks. Sanding sticks are a bit more forgiving than traditional files. I get mine from Flory Models. They come in various grades. The fine ones are best and you can clean up brass very, very quickly, very, very easily with these. They're excellent for removing any scratches you have on the surface. And so that rounds out the equipment I think is essential when building a model locomotive kit. Now we'll move on to the stuff that I think is nice to have or that I use from time to time in no particular order. First of all is a mini bench vise. Don't buy one like this, this is a cheap Chinese one. It is absolutely horrendous, there's far too much play in it. So if you're gonna get one, you're probably best to get a jeweler's vise. And that will be much more accurate and much more useful just to hold pieces of metal in when you're filing. Next bit of kit that I think is very useful but certainly not essential is a mini drill. Uh, I just got a cheap one from Wilkinson's. They come in a variety of different attachments. You can alter the speed and they're really useful for filing, sawing, drilling, you name it. This is a, a very useful time-saving piece of equipment to have in the workshop. This is a file card. You use it to clean your files. Sorry for the noise. Just helps to remove material and it prolongs the life of your file, so that's a, a file card. 
This is an engineer's scribe. It's got a very sharp, fine point on it. I use this for pushing out rivets. I also use it for marking lines on brass work if I'm doing any scratch work. So that's quite a handy thing to have. That's an engineer's scribe. We have tin snips, useful for cutting brass. I use these from time to time. Not particularly essential, but useful if you intend doing any scratch building. This is a Tamiya plastic scriber, which I use actually for cutting brass as well, and also deepening half etch lines that I need to enlarge or something like that. So this is something I use quite often, is a, a Tamiya plastic scriber. For the health and safety conscious among you, a pair of goggles is probably a good investment. I certainly use it when I'm using the rotary tool, the cutting tool. I've seen those discs shatter before and you wouldn't want that in your eyes. So I do recommend a decent pair of safety goggles for certain bits of work. A small pair of fine scissors is always useful to have on your workbench. This is a pair of Tamiya craft scissors. These are wire strippers. I use these obviously for stripping wire. A piercing saw. This is something I do use quite often actually. It's very useful especially for cutting off the ends of the crank pins when you are doing your wheels and your valve gear. These little things are taps um, or tapered taps if you like. These are, I've got an 8BA and a 12BA and these are really useful. I, they're probably essential tools in some respects, maybe, maybe not. They're quite expensive but, but they hope to open up uh, nuts when you've soldered them on. If you've got any solder on the screw thread, you can retap the the uh, nut with these, and these just attach into the tap wrench that I showed you before. So that's an 8BA uh, tapered tap. Little mini saw, very helpful indeed. Electrics wise, I've got a multimeter that's useful, obviously for you know on your on your layout for testing continuity, but also if you're building a locomotive and you just want to make sure that, for example, the frames are are isolated a multimeter is a good thing to buy you can get these off eBay or or anywhere really quite cheaply here's a hold and fold just google that hold and fold there are other alternatives available but this is the one that I use here we go made in the USA by the small shop and um, you can probably see the web address on there as well if you want to have a look uh, but this is something that I use from time to time if you've got intricate bits of photo etch that need to be bent up this is a, a very useful tool for that particular job. And then finally, I have a set of digital calipers. These are great for all sorts of things, especially if you're scratch building, but one of the things I use them for quite often is measuring the diameter of brass rod if I've forgotten what it is and I want to check whether it's 0.8 or 0.5. I use these calipers. So this has been a brief run through of the tools that I use for my locomotive building. As I say, I'll put some of the links to various suppliers and tool manufacturers in the description down below. I hope you found it useful. The list isn't exhaustive, of course. You might have your own preferences on what you particularly like to do with your own modeling, but for me, that's what I use. And as I say, with tools, probably the best thing to do is to, most of the time buy the best tools that you can afford generally speaking cheap tools are a bit of a misnomer they don't particularly last very well they're often not as sharp they're not as true so you do generally speaking get what you pay for but have a shop around have a look at some of the suppliers that i've listed below and i hope that this helps you in your loco building journey please remember to like and subscribe in the meantime enjoy your modeling and i'll see you again soon Bye bye